Good evening and welcome to Lefties Losing It. Here is a compilation of some of our favourite Lefties Losing It moments from the week. Enjoy. Let's start with a pack of self-loathing American lefties, many of them born and bred in the United States, being taught how to chant Death to America in Farsi. So I'm going to teach you a chant in Persian that you can use if you've ever encountered those Zionist freaks, whether they be Iranian or whatever, all right? <laughs> We can get a Mar Bar Amrita, yes we can. Mar Bar Amrita! Mar Bar Amrita! Mar Bar Amrita! Mar Bar Amrita! Magbar Omrika. They forced me uh, to chant that when I was at primary school in Tehran. That's the indoctrination of the Islamist Iranian regime. So as a five-year-old, I had more pride in the US because I refused to do it uh, than these adults, these pathetic, dangerous simpletons. Uh, I'm going to say I'm happy to do a GoFundMe and send them all on one-way tickets to Tehran. I guarantee you they're not going to like it. So have a look at them. Uh, they're all wearing masks. It's 2024. And these lefties losing it also practice chanting death to Israel. Mark Bar 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 Israel. It's just incredible. Remember, we saw chants of death to America about a week ago in Michigan. And this is why Imam Khomeini, who declared the International Day of Quds, this is why he would say to pour all of your cha all of your chants and all of your shouts upon the head of America. Ah, yes, quoting the Ayatollah and chanting death to America. Now let's see how. Democrat Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib answered questions about her constituents behaving in this manner. Congresswoman Tlaib. Fox News. I don't talk to Fox News. At a rally in your district, people were chanting death to America. Do you condemn? I don't talk to Fox News. But do you condemn chants of death to America? I don't talk to people that use racist tropes. Why can't you just say whether or not you condemn people chanting Fox death to America? Why are you afraid to talk to Fox? Fox News is not, not listen, using racist tropes towards my community is what Fox News is about, and I don't talk to Fox News. Is death to America racist? Is chanting death to America racist? I'm talking about your guys' racist tropes. Rashida Tlaib. Remember, she's not some fringe-dwelling loon with no power. She's a fringe-dwelling loon in Congress as a Democrat. Remember when she uh, was losing it, crashing Trump speeches back in 2016? You guys are crazy! You're an animal! Get a job! Yes, the Democrats saw that and decided to elect her to Congress. Now, let's take a look at Dr. Phil putting a lefty losing it in her place, quick smart. How do you create a quality of outcome uh, when people aren't you... the same? You're right. Some people are shorter. Some yep. people are taller looking over that fence. They can't both play in the NBA. Right. You can't create a quality of outcome. What gives a DEI program the right to come in and, and try and alter the, the nature of things to create a quality of outcome. So, that's been tried. That didn't work. That was called Marxism. Yes, that's called Marxism, lady. Communism, and it's uh, killed tens of millions of people around the world. Let's go now to a TikToker celebrating Iran attacking Israel because she, uh, I think it's a she, believes they're going to liberate Palestine. One, Oh gosh, as if the Iranian regime has ever liberated anyone. Palestinians need liberation from Hamas, which the Iranian regime backs. But that's all too complicated for the uh, neo-Marxists on TikTok. Now, we've played quite a bit of Bill Maher footage recently, often of him being owned by his own guests, uh, Patrick Bet David recently, Gillian Michaels, a number of people. And normally because Ma seems to have this weird adoration of Gavin Newsom, Californian Governor Gavin Newsom. 
But here on this program, Bill makes a great deal of sense talking about Sweden, but in the end, his TDS gets in the way. Sweden opened its borders to over a million and a half immigrants since 2010, and now 20% of its citizens are foreign born and its education system is tanking, and it has Europe's highest rate of gangland killings. And one result is that the far right parties are in the government now there for the first time. To which liberals say blaming immigrants for the rising crime rate is racist. Yeah, but is it true? <laughs> of course it's true. It's not a coincidence the quality of life went down after the Somali gangs started a drug turf war using hand grenades. Calling it racist doesn't solve the problem. It hands future elections to someone who will solve the problem and who, I promise, you're not going to like. You promise? No, Bill, I think uh, many Americans will like Trump solving the problem and that's the key phrase there, solve the problem. Even Trump deranged Ma acknowledges that Trump is going to solve that problem. And talking about Trump, what I'm looking forward to is the presidential debates, Biden v Trump, but is Joe Biden willing to turn up? He actually said, if I were him, I'd want to debate me too. What, what, what do you say today? Uh, that was a couple of months ago and there's been no debate. We'll hopefully get two or three debates during the presidential election campaign. But before the Trump camp gets too cocky, they should remember that Biden does pretty well in debates against Trump. Indeed, he's the only one who does, as the brilliant Shane Gillis explained. I think it is actually important to see how the candidates handle that type of pressure. <laughs> Of debating with Trump, dude, because so far none of them have been able to handle it. He literally, every debate, he just bullied whoever was up there. The only one who did pretty good in the debates against him was Biden, just because he had no f***ing idea what was being said. <laughs> Which actually helped him. That worked out for him. Because Trump's whole thing is he tries to get in the other guy's head, dude. You can't get in Joe's head. <laughs> Joe's not in there. Good luck, dude. Biden, Biden is Trump's kryptonite in a debate. He's literally perfect. You can't beat him. Because Trump's old, Trump tries to drag the other guy into like a shit talking contest where he will win. He will win at that. He can't get Biden. He tries. Every, every debate he's trying so hard and Biden's just... <laughs> That's it, though. He tries. He's just, you're a loser. Your son did crack. And Biden's just... <laughs> We love nothing more than new pronouns dropping. Let's take a minute and learn how to correctly use Pearl and Pearl's neo pronouns thanks to this informative and entertaining explainer from a young social justice warrior. How to use Pearl Pearl's pronouns in sentences. Hello there and welcome to Burger Machine. My name is Alex and my pronouns are Pearl Pearls. I understand that you might not be familiar with neo pronouns. So you're wanting to order a meal and you're met with some pronoun announcing pearl identity? Here's what you do. Even if they get your order horribly wrong, the key is not to misgender those identifying as pearls. Oh, it seems like Pearl gave me the wrong order. I'm sure Pearl is just busy. I don't want to bother Pearl, so I'll just try it. Oh gosh, it's terrible. Ah, smile! Pearl is coming. How's everything? Oh gosh, so delicious. Love to hear it! Why did you lie to Pearl? Ah, it's cool. Pearl is waiting seven tables all by Pearl's self. Stupid corporate minimum wage jobs. Just checking in again. Best meal ever. May I get a to-go box? So not only are these people, uh, absurd, they're massive lies as well. Now let's go to Atlanta and see how they treat pronouns. Pronouns? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know, I don't get it. What are my pronouns? Um, all right, cut real quick. I'm that man. Risk taker. Hustler. Pizza? Pizza, that's a pronoun that I can embrace. Now let's uh, look at pro-Palestinian protesters taking over Brooklyn Bridge, causing absolute havoc, traffic blocked for hours. But 
you don't want to try this sort of stuff in the great state of Florida because this is what happens when you break the law in a Republican state. Let's have a look. Yes, they were immediately dragged to the sidewalk and arrested. You can protest, it's your right to protest, but you do not have the right to block traffic and stop people going about their lawful business. Now let's uh, enjoy this bit of satire. The lefties losing it sure do provide so much material for those who are comically minded. Sadly, so many comics ignore it, but not this dude. Israel has been shooting down thousands of innocent Iranian drones and it needs to stop now. 40% of those drones are children. These are adolescent drones that are in the infancy of their dronehood. These are drones that will never be able to capture a sunset. These are drones that will never experience filming a landscape or a big shot of a city or a Jake Gyllenhaal ambulance chase scene. Please pray for the drones of Iran. Shame on you, Israel. Shame on you. Where would we be without the loony bin that is MSNBC? Let's have a look at Joe Scarborough, latest uh, delusional meltdown. Iran, why did Iran do what Iran did, knowing what the outcome was going to be? Because they didn't want to screw with the United States of America. Say what now? The Iranian regime raining down hundreds of missiles and suicide drones on Israel is a sign that they're scared of the Biden administration, they're scared of America. Yeah, that makes uh, perfect sense. Not at all the ravings of an irrational imbecile. Now, let's listen to Joe claim that it's conservatives who hate America, not the anti-West left. This is a world they give their viewers anything to try to make America look bad. They are obsessed when trashing America, when America is stronger, more powerful than ever before. Its economy is stronger and more powerful than ever before. Its economy is stronger than ever before. It's standing in the world better than ever before. Is this man gaslighting himself? I'm starting to fear for his health. Even some of his own panellists look a little concerned about this deranged rant. But you would never know this because they are fed a steady stream of hate America first rhetoric. <laughs> that guy is looking around, perhaps wondering when the men in white coats will appear. Now, let's check in with trans activist and brand ambassador Dylan Mulvaney. Here is more girlhood cosplaying. <laughs> The kids have a saying called FAFO, F around and find out. And that can be neatly applied to this next lefty losing it, who was very bold making death threats, but it soon ended in tears, literal tears. Let's have a look at Riddhi Patel threatening the Bakersfield mayor and councillors for not supporting a ceasefire. Strap yourselves in for this one. I don't have faith that you'll do this. You guys are all horrible human beings and Jesus probably would have killed you himself. And the thing is though, it's very clear to me as in someone who's been an organizer for the past couple of years, that none of you care because you, got, you guys don't care about anything happening in Palestine or any other country where oppression occurs because you don't care about the oppression occurring here. And I understand that you guys are all horrible people, I remind you that these holidays that we practice, that other people in the global south practice, believe in violent revolution against their oppressors. And I hope one day somebody brings the guillotine and kills all of you mother So regardless of whether you elect people into office, they'll backstab you, they'll let you die, and for that reason, you guys want to criminalize us with metal detectors, we'll see you at your house, we'll murder you. Uh, yeah, that's Saul Patel arrested immediately. It turns out you can't just 
threaten to murder people in their own homes just because you're a lefty losing it. Ms Patel, Ms Patel, that was a threat, what you said at the end, and so the officers are going to escort you out and take care of that. And the next time we saw Ms Patel, uh, she wasn't so bold. No, she was weeping, and as they say, fafo. <laughs> A deputy public defender entered not guilty pleas on Patel's behalf to eight counts of threatening a public official and 10 counts of making terroristic threats. And more mass disruptions across the U.S. with pro-Palestinian protesters shutting down roads, highways, bridges. Here they block both directions of the Golden Gate Bridge for hours. And it's not just the U.S. Look at these lefties in Canada pledging their allegiance to a terror leader. Yes, Sinwa, that's the leader of Hamas, one of the masterminds of the October 7 attack. But in Montreal, they are chanting, we are your men, Sinwa. Disgusting, disgusting. Let's take a look now at how these fed up travellers prevented from reaching O'Hare International Airport responded to the protesters blocking the roads. I can understand why she gave them the finger. They're forced to drag their bags across lanes of traffic to try to reach the airport on foot because these lawless lefties feel entitled to block roads, disrupt plans, destroy people's livelihoods or just a holiday they may have saved for years to, to afford. The law-abiding citizens seem to have very little protection there. It's the lunatics running the asylum in Chicago. President Joe Biden's cognitive decline is hitting new lows. The poor man is dazed and confused. And when he appears lucid for a moment or two, we get bizarre stories and debunked lies. Today, he told us he made it clear to Israel to stay out of Haifa. A little problem there. That's a major city in Israel, the third largest, in fact, after Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. So why is Biden telling the Israelis don't move on there? And I made it clear to Israelis, don't move on Haifa. It's just not, I mean, it, anyway, I, I just, look what we did recently when Israel was attacked. President Biden is also telling a bizarre new story about his uncle perhaps being eaten by cannibals in New Guinea. My uncle Bozzi, he, uh, he was shot down. He was an Army Air Corps before there was an Air Force. He got shot down in an area where there were a lot of uh, cannibals in New Guinea at the time. He never recovered his body. Only a little problem. His uncle's plane, in which he was a passenger, didn't crash in New Guinea, and it wasn't shot down. According to official military records, state the aircraft plunged into the Pacific. Pentagon records state, for unknown reasons, this plane was forced to ditch in the ocean off the north coast of New Guinea. Both engines failed at low altitude and the aircraft's nose hit the water hard. The three men failed to emerge from the sinking wreck and were lost in the crash. One crew member survived and was rescued by a passing barge. But not according to the president, who, for reasons no one can explain, has begun spinning this bizarre variation to the story where the plane is shut down, his uncle is consumed by man-eating primitives, and he's so taken by this fantasy tale that he's repeated it twice in 24 hours. My uncle, they called him Ambrose uh, Brosey, they called him Bosey. My uncle Bosey was a hell of an athlete, they tell me, when he was a kid. And he became an Army Air Corps before the Air Force came along. He flew those single-engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. And he got shot down in New Guinea. And uh, they never found the body because there used to be there were a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea. 
Bizarre, bizarre, but it wasn't the only bizarre story Biden has told in the past couple of days. So yesterday he was in his hometown of Scranton, Pennsylvania. And let's listen to this little tale and see if you can follow what in God's name the president is trying to convey here. Day I showed up at off your convention and I was in uh, I was in the motel after the local motel getting changed after the afternoon session, go back to the evening session. I'd come down with some young activists, a little older than me, but still young activists who uh, were uh, involved in trying to reform the party. <laughs> And uh, I was in one of those eight by 10 bathrooms, you know, they have shower, toilet in the sink. And I got a towel on me and shaving cream and I heard bam, bam, bam at my door really loudly. And uh, I wonder what the hell is that? I thought it was this guy, Bob Cunningham, on a radio show and a couple other guys. So I said, OK, OK, guys. And after thrilling that tiny crowd with his confused tales from, I don't know, 60 years ago, he hit a local a petrol station in Pennsylvania to press the flesh with the locals, only no one seemed terribly excited to see him. <laughs> Before he left, he took a single question from the assembled media. It was a serious question about China, steel tariffs, Xi Jinping. But this was the president's answer. Don't jump. That, that was his answer. Let's compare that to former President Tr Donald Trump's visit to a bodega in New York City. Let's see the crowd reaction uh, in this Democrat heartland uh, part of the country. We love Trump! 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 That's in Harlem, folks. My gosh, just a little bit different to the reception Biden received during his little walkabout. And of course, Trump is in New York right now facing ridiculous uh, politically motivated criminal charges. Let's hear from one of the prospective jurors. Yesterday, a woman who had posted anti-Trump material on social media was added to the jury pool. The judge thought she was a fit and proper person to, to sit in the jury. And this woman, who we're about to hear, about, uh, hear from now, was only dismissed because of a scheduling conflict. Yeah, I'm sure Trump is going to get a fair trial with that judge and the likes of this woman. Can you share your opinion of, of the former president and, and, and why you felt <laughs> that you could be unbiased? Uh, I'm not a fan. And I think his handling of COVID-19 was uh, abysmal. Um, I also I have a sister who was adopted from China. And um, the comments he made about China when he was running for president um, made her very anxious and therefore made me angry. Um, there are policies he has supported um, that regard uh, women and, and reproductive health that I do not agree with. Yeah, she thought she could be unbiased and was only dismissed because of a scheduling issue. No wonder the overwhelming majority of Americans have little faith in the justice system. Now, we brought you footage of pro-Palestinian protesters blocking both sides of the Golden Gate Bridge yesterday. This went on for hours, causing absolute mayhem. Let's now take a look at how one of these protesters behaves as police free him from a barrel filled with concrete that he deliberately put his arm in. 
This man child is another lefty losing it. Okay, hold on. By the numbers. All right, let go of your fingers. Let go. 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 Oh, what can you say? There's a lot I could say, but I probably shouldn't. It's been a while since we featured Biden's White House Press Secretary, Corinne Jean-Pierre. What's she been up to? Australian content. Here is an Instagram influencer, is that still a thing? Pining, pining for the return of Dan Andrews and lockdowns. I think she's joking, but really, who can tell these days with so many lefties losing it? I miss and support Dan Andrews and I wish that he would come back and rule Melbourne and lock us all up because they were the best times of my life when we had Nowhere to go. We weren't allowed after out after 8 p.m. One hour a day curfew. It made me feel loved. It made me feel special. Bring back Dan Andrews. And that's Lefties losing it for this week. We'll have plenty more where that came from Monday night.